Hello everyone and welcome to Star Citizen Alpha 3.3.6 where I have continued to enjoy the free flight week. In real time when I release this video the free flight week will be over but in this video it was November 29th and the free craft were from Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern which is MISC miscellaneous uh, but uh, M-I-S-C I mean so interesting acronym but Anyway, the particular ships are the Freelancer, Prospector, Razor, Reliant Course, and Starfarer, and Starfarer Gemini. And we'll get to see those in the expo in a moment. This time I'm gonna cut a few more scenes out. Last time, in the previous video, I wanted to present a more continuous chunk of gameplay so that you got a sense of wait times and stuff like that. This time I'm gonna cut out all of the elevator wait times and stuff like that so that we get to the point uh, but uh, it is sort of a lived-in universe kind of thing and we spawn in the residential area and have to take the subway slash monorail whatever it is over here each time so there's a definite incentive not to die because dying is rather inconvenient anyway this is the prospector which is our mining ship and here I am renting it out I don't actually get to try it out in this video um, I'll be trying it out in the next video though though not with much success. This is the Reliant Core. Um, this one is vaguely reminiscent of something in EVE Online. Somebody had commented during one of my live streams that what I thought of, somebody had some opinion that the ships in uh, Star Citizen were from EVE Online. I'm going, no. No, th th this, uh, if you play EVE, you might recognize which particular ship that reminds me of tangentially, but you know, uh, there are a limited, number of spaceship designs but if you take a look at these these razors they're more like the ships from the original wing commander right um most of the ships in star citizen are reminiscent of chris roberts's old designs from wing commander or from freelancer or something like that not not from something more recent so yeah and of course wing commander those designs have been embedded in my mind already so I'm always going to remember certain ones of those. So that is a Starfarer, but I didn't see a way to rent it. I, I thought there were people who were flying it around, so there must be a way to rent it, but I couldn't figure out how to rent it. I only half-heartedly tried though, because, well, it's big, and I was more interested in the freelancer anyway. It seemed like the thing to do to... Really, what I should have been doing this whole time during this free flight stuff is trying to figure out how to make credits. Taking advantage of these free ships so that I can make some credits. And uh, that would have been a productive use of these things because I'm not going to have access to these huge ships. But actually, as I understand it, the credits sort of reset after each update anyway during Alpha. So maybe it's better just to enjoy them. Maybe I ended up doing the right thing after all. But we will attempt to make credits with the Freelancer later on in this video. And we'll see how that goes. But for now, let's get back upstairs. I think I've rented what I can rent as far as I can tell. So we're back at the ship retrieval console. And the first one I decided to try out is the Razor. I don't know about the whole stealth fighter thing. I don't think they've implemented stealth per se. It might just mean it's a cool looking fighter. But uh, um, I figured that I should try out some of the lighter craft first because after, you know, I have the Aurora and once a release comes out, I will have to decide which of those light aircraft, or not aircraft, spacecraft I want to aim for as my first, you know, uh, first goal. And so maybe it's going to be the Razor, maybe it's something else. Of course, we don't know the firm prices of these things, so it's tough to say. I mean, in-game prices, of course. So yeah, that will have to be a consideration, but uh, it's important to be satisfied with the look of the thing and the feel of the thing, too. Oh, it's sort of popping up and down a little bit. A uh, little bit of a Kerbal suspension issue there. But anyway, it, it certainly looks cool if it's silver and black. That's a good look for things. Don't know about the whole biplane canard thing going on. Why, why do we have two, you know, sort of a biplane canard arrangement? Well, anyway, you have to make the ships distinct somehow, I suppose. 
I can't get in through the right side, have to get in through the left side. Alright. Just taking a look around. I don't know, I'm not 100% satisfied with the look. And aside from the canards way up front, you can see sort of smaller ones besides the cockpit. There's a lot of aerodynamic complexity to this. Okay, the usual trying to figure out where the flight ready button is. There it is. Okay, now. Time to get clearance, of course. Let me check out the buttons and everything. And once we got clearance from the creepy guy at uh, traffic control, up I go. Now, in the previous video, it was nighttime at Lorville, and I decided to take advantage of the fact that it was daytime right now to do some looking around. Now, of course, there is that orange zone, the no fly zone around much of the city. But we could test the limitations here a bit. And one thing I wanted to do was see if I could fly under that arch. I don't know what it's called. It's that big gateway looking thing. Like it ought to be a gateway to another dimension sort of thing. But uh, also sort of reminiscent of Blade Runner, right? There's that big pyramid kind of thing in Blade Runner. Uh, it sort of reminds me of that. Uh, overall, there's a sort of dystopian thing going around here in Lorville. It's very, um, like, like, uh, very industrial. Industrial in a bad way. <laughs> so, here I go. So I'm gonna watch out for the orange zone and no-fly zone. Is the whole arch in a no-fly zone, or can we actually fly under the arch? I just wanted to figure this out. I mean, when, when something like that presents itself, surely they expect pilots... Okay, well, there's the orange zone. But it doesn't seem to extend to the top of the arch, does it? So it looks like they did indeed figure that pilots would want to fly under this thing. And... And it looks alright. And we come out through the other side. Where we have the rest of the wasteland. And there's just past Lorville, that's the terrain. You can see just past the arch. You flip around. And what follows is really a bunch of close encounters with the no-fly zone. So, first plunging down, of course. And you can see the general warning, but it gives a louder beep when you're getting close to uh, no-fly zone. And generally it seems like they give you enough warning time. That's important. At least uh, given my flight skills, my reaction time, I'm pretty slow. So if I can react quickly enough to avoid the no-fly zone, I think it's okay. Interesting sort of uh, pit there. You can see there. Just taking a look around. Yep. There's a special little bubble around that thing. Woo! Okay. That's a nice sun right there. Interesting effects. Uh, now back over to city. And I decided to try and do the landing sequence at the spaceport. It's a bit complicated. If you haven't been to Lorville, it's not it's not easy to land at Lorville. And so I'm glad that during this whole expo thing that I've been spawning at Lorville. Once you land there, you spawn there. And then you have to if you want to spawn somewhere else, you have to go through the airlocks. You know, land there properly and go through the airlocks as far as I can tell. If you just like try and walk in, it's not going to work. So, landing services. This time the video didn't play. I didn't mind because I'm always creeped out by that guy. So, I trust I have clearance. I take a look down where, uh, in between the signs that say uh, Tisa Spaceport. And you can see one of the doors sort of opening up. It has a wrench icon on it. And that's the one that's for me. Nope, but there's the no-fly zone. So 
So we have to gently get in there. You can see the no fly zone is really tight around these landing pads. I'm using translation as well. Translation is on the hat key for me, except for forward and back. Forward and back is just a throttle. But uh, up, down, side to side is the hat key, which is, you know, digitals. You know, it's a one or a zero, so. So it's a little bit finicky. And of course, because forward and back is the main throttle, it's sort of jerky like that. There, I'm finally uh, lowering the landing gear. I think lowering the landing gear makes it a little bit smoother on the whole trying to set down here, but still. There we go. I'm probably going to have to practice this, this whole thing a bit because, you know, landing at locations around star season is going to be a thing that's going to happen frequently. I don't think all locations are going to have no fly zones around them. Uh, certainly Port, Port Olisar doesn't have anything like that and uh, most of the locations on the moons do not. But there's probably going to be other cities. That's They've incomplete. sort of got a procedural generation system for the cities as, uh, from what I understand. So there's going to be other cities that I don't know if they're going to look similar to Lorville, you know, based on Lorville architecture or something like that. But anyway, I decided to go with the Freelancer this time, having successfully landed. And here we are with the Freelancer. I go with the back entryway. And the lighting inside is a little bit weird. It gets really dark. Flashy lights. Yeah, really, really dark. A two-seater cockpit, and it's bouncy. You'll know it is bouncy. It's a Kerbal suspension system again. But I like the two-seat cockpit. Though, probably I'll need to find some co-pilot then, maybe. Alright, once I take the seat, the bouncing stops, which is interesting. At first I accessed my Mobi to get clearance, of course, but then I went through some of the other tabs. Equipment manager. But really what I wanted was missions. I wanted contracts, ways to use the freelancer in the way it's supposed to be used. And we had these delivery missions. Most of the missions seem to be delivery missions. And they all don't pay particularly great. Well, I don't know. Um, at least compared to the price of an M50, they don't pay particularly great. Again, this is a, uh, apparently I've been told that they reset anyway, so it's probably no point me trying to aim for the M50 unless I expect the next update to take a really long time, which is possible. So maybe I should, I don't know. Depends. Depends how you look at things. Anyway, the freelancer... Please visit us again is bigger Remember if you're contemplating so a career change you should contact one of Hurston's resource managers for information it definitely has a lot more inertia and needs to be handled carefully and here I tilt up it takes a long time to get to space by the way and space is a hundred kilometers uh, on uh, around Hurston and that trip takes you know maybe four to five minutes depending on how much afterburner you use so it's a it's a fair amount of time and I really I really do think that they could do well with making the ships a little bit faster or giving us some sort of mode to go to because I know that they want to keep the speeds a certain amount in order to allow for good dogfighting and all but uh, maybe a mode that you need some time to transition to that would allow a uh, sort of a cruise mode would be nice anyway so I had picked up this one contract that requires us to get to Yella, uh, the Benson mining outpost. And actually, it's both locations, the pickup location and a drop-off location, seem to be on the same moon. So it's like, do you really need a spaceship? But anyway, if they're going to pay us, they're going to pay us. So I try and get there, but Hurston is in the way. So I actually have to aim for a different point. I aim for that point so that uh, we can sort of get around Hurston to get to my target. I think in my this new uh, in the previous video I didn't use quantum drive. I yeah. So this will be the first time I've used quantum drive in this update, I believe, in the videos. 
so sometimes the reticle sort of distorts when you're going into quantum drive but not when it's a close location you saw it didn't really do the whole quantum drive thing and that's because my destination is really close now this time when we're trying to go to a different planet in the system we're going to crusader which is the gas giant that will cause all sorts of distortion you see there that distortion and then the full quantum travel effect and this trip uh, to another planet takes about five minutes so these are not trivial trips and that i don't mind because you know traveling to another planet ought to take some time so i cut out that that whole travel and here we are at crusader i i feel like the texture on the gas giant could be a little bit better but yeah I've seen some pretty spectacular photos of of Jupiter, so so yeah, my my expectations are higher. Uh, anyway, uh, once again, our destination is just really close to the planet, so I decided to jump to Port Olisar first, and so here's that transition. I eventually figure out that you can spool at the same time as you're calibrating. So basically, you have to pr uh, turn to the target in order to start calibration. You press B once in order to start spooling. And you have to hold down B to actually initiate the quantum drive. Quantum travel Those are the steps. Speaking of holding down keys, I finally figured out in the next video uh, that in order to really make use of all the camera controls you have to hold down F4. That's something I didn't know. I had been using the Z key but I didn't know that holding down the F4 key allowed you to pan the camera and zoom in and out properly in the external view. So that's something I learned. Okay here we are lining up with our real target the pickup site at Yella. And there it is. It's got sort of a ring on it. Nice sort of ice planet look. Right after we come out of quantum travel, sometimes it's a little bit finicky as far as allowing me to control the craft. It's like the autopilot doesn't entirely want to give up. So the pickup site is pretty close by, but it would take a long time using afterburner or the regular engines to get there still. So. I use quantum travel on this short hop and when you're trying to do a short hop to a ground location that does this sort of thing. See this is all under its own control. It automatically points you there, it automatically rolls you in the right direction kind of thing. And only once it's done that does it drop you off. But then again its handoff is a little bit awkward and I don't know why. So I'm attempting to reorient here after that awkward handoff. And then on to the location. It's sort of in the dark. Uh, there's sort of an ambient light going here, but it's much darker on the ground than it seems to be up here. And you can sort of make out the base. I only found out after uh, making the video that turning on the lights is just five. You know, the number five turns on the lights. Okay, but here I am, landing. landing gear down. Apparently, I'm in a crater because current altitude is negative. Freelancer is a nice looking ship. It's definitely a nice looking ship reminiscent of many things. But I was trying to figure out where exactly I was supposed to do this pickup. It's not like there's a particular pad. I tried to get as close to the pickup site as possible, but didn't know exactly what I was supposed to do here, and it's the first time I've attempted this kind of delivery mission. And, well, obviously that's as close as I'm gonna get there. 
I don't know if the comment in the upper left has occurred yet, but at some point somebody says that the delivery missions are bugged. And um, yeah, that got stuck in my head. <laughs> uh, and oop. The way the ship sort of flopped down did not make, make me feel good either. Anyway, I head out through the back. There, there is a side door as well. I decided to go out through the back. There we go. Deliver missions are generally bugged. Look at it and hit F. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't know where the package was. I certainly look at a whole lot of stuff and hit F, but I decided to go in the base. It's probably a good thing to do anyway. I wanted to see what it looked like, but I wasn't sure what I was supposed to or whether I could have just, you know, hit F from the ship. And here we go in. There's certainly a lot of stuff in here, but no, no uh, individuals, no NPCs or anything. That's interesting. There were NPCs around uh, Lorville. Just hanging out. There's certainly some crates here. And I try to see if there's any of them that would like to come along with me, but no, no such luck. I tried to remember which one was the one I came in through. Both of them seem to have the same sign at the top of these doors. And this is the way that I came in. So the other way I have not been through. Okay. Oh, I, I think the sign was different. Uh, it's just it's too subtle for me to notice quickly. Well, at this point, I was pretty certain I wasn't supposed to be actually in here. But then I noticed this console, trading and shipping console. Well, that must mean that they figure somebody's going to be in here to use something like this. But this is certainly not where I'm going to pick up what I need to pick up, right? Right? <laughs> Unless I'm using it wrong. Uh, commodity, cargo, no. Interesting prices. If those are the prices for the cargo per unit, and I, I've got the number of units it's got displayed there in this freelancer. There's not a whole lot of money to be made from that unless their price per unit is for a much, much smaller unit than the cargo unit. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't want to check that out just yet. So I decided to go back outside, back to the ship and see if there was any way to access something from the ship that would get me the cargo. But first, a uh, quick look around to see if there's just something lying out here. Nothing obvious though. There are a lot of crates. There are definitely a lot of crates. Maybe those crates are what I need, I just don't know how to access them. But alright, freelancer. And I think I try and go through the side door here. Oh, right, because the back door is too high up. I know it's a little bit dark, but you can sort of see that the ramp is way above the ground and my character can't really jump very well. Here, let's try and jump. That's a jump. Nope, that's not going to work. So, side door it is. Side door has a ladder. And I'm not too sure what ends up happening here, but okay, there's the door, yeah. And it has an enter ship option, which is good. Come on. Come on. There we go. Sweet spot. Enter ship. And ladder comes down. And somehow I die. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Maybe I got stabbed by the ladder or something. I don't know. I don't know what went wrong. But right there, I apparently died because I respawned back at Lorville. Back at Lorville with a long metro ride ahead of me. Not that long, it's, uh, but uh, 
enough of a metro ride that I decided to uh, maybe call it quits at this point. So, delivery missions, not too sure about them. M maybe they're bugged, maybe I just didn't know what to do. Maybe you guys can tell me if I was just missing something and I could have actually fulfilled that mission. But uh, I did check whether the mission was still under my accepted contracts and it was not. The mission disappeared mysteriously after I died. So maybe just contracts do not carry over if you've already died. Or maybe there was some other issue. Not sure, but I am I am pretty sure that unless I get some answer, I probably will hold off on the delivery missions for a little bit. And I might try something else. Mercenary is tantalizing, but I'm afraid of what kind of, what kind of bad guys I'm going to meet up like that. Yeah, there's... Well, I mean, they're all in the same sort of price range. 300 to 1,000 credits, it seems. Well, with that failed attempt to conduct a mission in the game, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.